Valley Christmas. Our way. I am Edikai Mary. Are you waiting until December 25th for you to begin Christmas? Let me announce to you that 2019 already has started. Some of us had the privileges or the privilege of connecting with the world of the supernatural. In case you say that I'm talking about the supernatural, I mean with the, the planet that our Father and our Jesus lives. And that planet is called heaven. It's as real as any other planet. And it's the biggest planet. Now let's go. Without belaboring that matter, I have been strictly told that 2019 has started at the end of November 2018. We are now in the season of Advent, but during this season, I want to go ahead and introduce the world officially to the world of Christmas that is coming. So while we are celebrating Advent and while we await for the birth of the king, which is simply a reenactment. We are just reenacting. We are just re-dramatizing what has already been done. When I realized that God has already gone ahead of everybody to start 2019, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing tonight. Now let's go. Let us pray. Eternal Father, thank you for alerting us to what you are already doing and to where you are already going. Our desire is to follow you, is to run after you, not to crawl, not to walk, but to run after you. For with the movement of the cherubims you ride on the wings of the wind now we ask you oh god since you've already gone into next year that we enter into it with you right now and when the world celebrate the new year we are already in it a long time ago. We know that the Jewish community are already in next year, since September and October. Now, dear Father, grant us the ability to obey you, to yield to you, and to walk with you. We know of a fact that you have given us the privilege of enjoying the year that is to come. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our God, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of God the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us hear the reading from the Holy Gospel. Please Amen. announce where you are reading and what verse to what verse you are reading tonight. Hallelujah. I'm reading from Luke chapter 1, verse 1 to 25. 
In as much as many have taken in hand to set in order a narrative of those things which have been fulfilled among us, just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word delivered them to us. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from very first, to write to you an orderly account, most excellent, Theophilus, that you may know the certainty of those things in which you were instructed. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judah, a certain priest named Zacharias of the division of Abijah. His wife was of the daughter of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both well advanced in years. So it was that while he was serving as priest before God in the order of his division, according to the custom of the priesthood, his lot fell to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people was praying outside at the hour of incense. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son. And you shall call his name John, and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years. And the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God, and was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. But behold, you will be mute and not able to speak until the day these things take place because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their own time. And the people waited for Zechariah and marveled because he lingered so long in the temple. But when he came out, he could not speak to them. And they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned to them and remained speechless. So it was, as soon as those days of his servants were completed, that he departed to his own house. Now after those days his wife Elizabeth conceived, and he hid, excuse me, and she hid herself five months, saying, Thus the Lord has dealt with me in the days when he looked upon me to take away my reproach among people. The word 
the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless to us the reading from his holy gospel. And unto his name be the praise and glory, both now and forevermore. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory be to you, God the Father. And glory be to you, God the Holy Spirit, for what you have done among us human beings, both now and forever. Amen. 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 You have been saying that you don't have anyone to help you. In John chapter 5, the man at the pool was waiting for the angel to stay up the water and for somebody to push him in. I wonder why his family wasn't there, why they did not stay there. But they were contented with keeping the money that he begged for day in, day out. For 30 something years. Almost 40 years. But they were not there to push him inside the water. The woman with the flow of blood in Mark chapter 5. The crazy man living in the cemetery. Jairus, whose daughter was dying. The Bible, the New Testament, is filled with mission impossible. You have been saying, since you were born, that you don't have anyone to help you. You are only playing family. You talk so much about your family. But when there is a big need, a financial need, a material need, a supernatural need, your story changes. You don't have nobody. But when the going is good, you talk all the good things about your family, but when the tire meets the road, you suddenly realize that you have nobody. The earth, many a times, nature itself, the world of darkness itself, would throw at you mission impossible. So be careful about pressing your family too much because most of what you are doing, you are simply trying to cover the nakedness of your family members. You're trying to cover up their poverty their sicknesses, their wickedness, their lack of compassion, and their inability to care. His family, by word of mouth, but by action, it is mission impossible. Throughout the Bible, where you find mission impossible, is where Jesus, or God the Father and the Holy Ghost and angels, are going to act. And when they act, mission impossible becomes opportunities, ordinary challenges that are meaningless and nothing in the sight of the Lord. Therefore, 
all your fears, all your doubt, were actions in futility. How do you know weak people? How do you know fools and idiots and ignorance and arrogant people? Cheap, like cheap alcohol, is their doubt, their fear, their talkativeness, and their hopelessness, helplessness, and nothingness. Walk away from such people. Walk away. From the scripture we read this evening, I welcome you to the world of God. For human being, it's mission impossible. For God, those are signposts to see whether you want to do things, whether you're interested in breaking nature, whether you're interested in moving forward. For every human being who have decided to be a sad human being, sad people, telling sad stories, human beings who've decided not to do anything about their past, who do not want to rearrange their past in order for them to be able to rearrange their present and be able to arrange their future, such human beings will live in the land of mission impossible. And their lives will be filled with emptiness and cursing and struggles and unhappiness, sadness, sorrows and grief because they think that the earth owed them something. Their fathers and mothers owed them something. That it was a mistake that they were born. Let me tell you this tonight. My father and mother do not owe me nothing. My nation do not owe me nothing. America doesn't owe me nothing. Europe and Canada do not owe you nothing. The Caribbean do not owe you nothing. Your uncles, aunts, nephews, people do not owe you nothing. Why? Because it was carefully calibrated, carefully calculated, carefully put together, carefully packaged who you are, what you are here for. Your job here is to prove to humanity, is to prove to heaven that you are here to turn mission impossible to possible possibility mission enterprising missions that's your job here you have inside you jesus king of kings lord of lord and all the benefits he has acquired for you you have got the father the source of all things, the mind behind everything, the being behind everything, the person behind all things good, all things righteous, all things beneficial. You have the Holy Spirit, the activator of all of the Father and all of the Son. You have them. You have me. What's your problem? What are you looking for? What are you shopping for? Why can't you move away to begin to see that you were not born into Mission Impossible, but to cross from that territory into the land awaiting you? Let me tell you what God has asked me to tell the world today. To tell you, my friend, my brothers and my sisters, I have gone ahead of you into next year, 
everything you will hear people preach and teach and prophesy are old stories already. I have gone into 2019 already. And you cannot follow me with your behaviors, with the way you perceive life, with your entitlement behaviors, with your doubts, your fears, your inability to appreciate even the test that I've put before you. I've gone ahead of you because I have an urgent business. I have a business to do on the earth. I have washed the earth. I've allowed human beings to do what they want to do. But because the cry of the righteous has come before my throne, therefore, I have moved ahead of everybody into 2000. And 19 because I have an urgent job to do. I do not want the world of the wicked to overwhelm the world of the righteous and the sins. If not, it will be as my son says, that but for the fact that the days have been shortened, nobody will be saved. Some people went as far as saying that I failed in all my experiment and exploration and adventures with the earth, with human beings, with angels, with civilizations come and gone, that you have no idea or you can see a little bit into it. I didn't fail. I am a God that gives you choices. I do not force you to do what I put in front of you. You have to choose between right and wrong. You have to choose between good and evil. If you love me, it must come from your heart. It's not because I'm forcing you. In as much as I put laws in order to safeguard the earth and to safeguard the sins, I am not a God of law. I am a God of choice and a God of love. My job on earth has become urgent. I want to prepare you to place you in places of righteousness, in places of power, in places of administration, in places where you handle money, in places where you are in charge for me. I do not come to the earth with my two legs and my personality to begin to frighten the world because just my presence alone, you cannot handle it. Talk more or lies of me coming in person. Therefore, I have charged the universe to be governed by you, by the sins, not by the sinners. But the sins have left the world of ruling, the world of governing, they are afraid of stepping into the unknown. And yet the sons and daughters of wickedness have stepped by tricks, by manipulation, by lying, by deceits, they, and by throwing doubt and fears upon your greatness. And you have begun to doubt yourself to doubt your bet, to see other people as better than you. Woe unto the community of the sins, and woe to those people who have my greatness in them, and yet they doubt my power. Woe to those who think that I am a God who delayed things and do not know. That at my appropriate time, I act. And when I act on your behalf, you get everything. I have heard what you've said about me. I've also heard what you've said about my servants. You've spoken. You've gone about searching. You've spoken against me. 
You think that there are certain people whose prayers I answered and certain people whose prayers I do not answer. I, the Lord, answers every prayer. I am not limited by your sinning, neither am I limited by your righteousness. What moves me is the righteousness of my son in you. What moves me is the power of the righteousness of my son in you. Because the multiplication of your righteousness is not equal to the work of my son for you. Therefore, you are operating on a borrowed time, a borrowed life, a borrowed righteousness, a borrowed legality, a borrowed everything. I have a job to do, and I have to do it quickly. For those of you who pride yourself that you are keeping the laws of God and you are using it against everybody, beware. Because I've seen what you are doing in the dark. This is what I said. The sovereign Lord speaks and said this. Woe to those preachers. Woe to those prophets. Who comes to you? Talking about laws. Talking about leadership. They do not obey me. They do not listen to me. They are neither prophets nor pastors. They came to walk in my name. They employ themselves. Or their churches employ them. But I have nothing to do with them. Woe to those who have taken up the challenge of becoming national speakers of God in their countries. But they do not consult me in state. They have meetings in darkness with politicians. They have meetings in darkness with businessmen and women. And they fool my people. And they are gullible, vulnerable, and they fall for it. I will punish those who have made a fool of my name. But I want to tell you, I am not part of what they are doing. The days have come, and my business is quick, because I want to remove from the earth everyone who have done so much harm to my name and to my word, which I honor and exalt above everything. Tonight says the Lord, I will pass through the earth like I passed through Egypt and I will sweep house. Many voices that you have been hearing, you have been seeing on television will be silent forever because hell is full of television pastors, is full of internet preachers, is full of seers and prophets. You think they are for me, but I know they are for their father, the devil. This is what the Spirit of the Lord says in addition to that. I have a job to do, and I have to do it very fast, so that your sadness will be turned to happiness. Thus says the Holy One who died on the cross for you. I have seen your suffering. You have waited for me. The book has been read for me about your seed, about your suffering about your groanings. Thus says the Spirit of the Lord to those of you who do not have seed of the womb and you are regretting having help of your own kind, of your bloodlines, and they have rewarded you with harshness, with bitterness, 
with betrayal and abandonment. Thus says the sovereign one, those of you who maintain your husband, sustain your husband and wife, and at the end, they turn against you, use you, dump you, spoke against you. Tonight, I have a job to do, and I have to do it quickly. I am passing through the land to settle cases. Cases that have been rightly put before me. There are many people who will never be seen. Neither will their voices be heard anymore. In the days of Elizabeth and Zacharias, they had mission impossible. I turn the impossible mission of not having children. I turn the impossible mission of not having faith in my person. Read the word. Zachariah saved me. But Zachariah didn't know me. Wow, that is strange. Elizabeth saved me. But Elizabeth didn't know me. But I still came for them. They followed my ways, blameless, but they did not know me. That was why at the time of my visitation, they didn't notice that it was I. There is a difference between following me between following my ways and knowing me. Zechariah and Elizabeth had faith in themselves. That's why Zechariah said, I am an old man. I, the Lord, do not see age. Because spirit has no age. You are a limitless and an unlimited spirit. I decide when your blooming begins. I decide when the flower begins to grow. I decide the harvests. I started modern history with Abraham. I like that. Go and find out how old he was. I do not base my power or my wealth on age or race or gender. In my presence, I don't have a man, I don't have a woman, I have you. I like that. For those who cry out to me, not to know my ways, not to know my law, not to know my love, but all of it, plus, to know me personally. I will come and enter into the covenant that my son has made with you. Before my son came to the earth, 
I the Father speaks. Before my Son, my Lord, my God, I am his God. And I honor him as God and as Lord. There is no confusion in the Trinity. For I am God and I can only reproduce myself. Therefore, when I call Jesus God, the Holy Spirit God, is because I am God. When I call you a small God, is because you are like me. A little lower than the angels. If you cry out to know me as a person, to experience me, you will begin to exercise the lifestyle of angels on the earth. This is what I did. I sent my son to start the mission possible. So that no one will steal from you what I gave you. That's why I introduced my son to you. So that he will hold for you what belongs to you. So that nobody will make a fool of you ever. When it was time, when the arrangement was being made for Jesus, Emmanuel, God in your midst, who has always been in our midst to come to the earth and to take care of duty for you. I sent John, the deepest, to go ahead of him. In 2019, Hear me and hear me well. For those of you who have been crying out, I have no body. I have no body. I have done for everybody. Nobody has done for me. Hear me and hear me well. I, the God of the prince and princess, I, the father speaks. On behalf of the Trinity, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I speak and I'm speaking to you. I sent you Jesus. I sent you the Holy Ghost. In the days of old, I sent you prophets. In modern times, you don't know who is real anymore. But I'm going to teach you how to be sensitive to my spirit and how to demarcate between the false, the fake, the manipulator, and the real. I did not send you to do Mission Impossible. That's why I sent angels. And I will send numerous angels in the year that you have entered with me. I send Zechariah, Gabriel, the archangel, the one that your shepherd loves, 
Father, thank you that you acknowledge that. Who stand in my presence? But Zechariah was looking at his nature, his health. He was looking at old age. He was looking at his religion. Can you imagine that a people will be so practical in their religion that they will be so blinded towards me? Mission is mission impossible. It's when I'm standing right before you and you cannot see me. You cannot sense me. You fast, you pray, and yet I am standing before you. When will you stop praying and fasting as law and religion and do it beginning with Father, I want to experience you. To experience me is what creates knowing me. Is knowing me is what creates my protocol which involves my laws, my ways. You want to experience my financial breakthrough my healing, my love, my material explosion. Start with telling me, Father, in the name of your son, can I be allowed to ex experience, to operate in experiencing you? If what I'm saying tonight do not break you down, I wonder what. So, even though Zechariah was looking at nature, looking at old age, looking at his, relig uh, his relationship with his religion, to in and looking at the old age of his wife to interpret me, do not subject me to your own personal or doctrinal interpretation. Allow me to be father to you. Allow my son to be your king. Allow my spirit, the Holy Ghost whom we love greatly, to be your God. And you will succeed greatly in 2019. I have entered into this year already. I am already forming things that you will see begin to happen already. The cycle is running fast and will end fast. Before you know it, it will be like you are just waking up and 2019 will be over. I have a work to do and I have to do it very fast because I have to do everything with you before you embark on a new regime, on a new ordinance, and a new cycle, which begins in 2020. The year in which I will remove the locusts. There, is, there are locusts in the land. Everything looks fine. It looks like you are Having prosperity, you have not yet started, says the Spirit of the Lord. In spite of Zechariah's disobedience of having faith in experiencing me, I overrode and I underwrote him. I was his underwriter. I became his sponsor. And what did I do? I did 
what I've always wanted to do. His prayer came up to me in spite of the fact that it was a prayer that lacked the faith in who I am and what I can do. I overcame his fears and doubt. And I gave him something big, a child. And that child was to go ahead of my son to start the way, to prepare his way. Listen to me tonight. Please stop talking. Please stop talking. Whoever is on the phone. Please listen to me. You have been crying out to me that you have nobody. I prepared John before he came. I prepared my son before he came through John. I did not send you to the earth without somebody to go ahead of you. Tonight, I want you to ask me to send somebody ahead of you, to send you a helper, someone that you will be willing to listen to. Tonight, enter into 2019 with me. Tell heaven to send you somebody. Somebody that was prepared for you. I did not send you to walk in darkness, in chaos, in emptiness. You are looking at your family members. Look outside. Open the window and shout, Lord, send me the person that you prepared for me to go ahead of me so that life will be made easier for me. There is somebody hidden away until you ask for his or her revelation. He or she will not come. Ask for God to give you a financial person to go ahead of you. Many of you have chosen your spiritual fathers or mothers. Many of you are still confused. Have you asked God for the one person whose voice you are going to listen to throughout your lifetime? Many of you are mixing occultism, spiritism with me. I'm going to clear all of that. You are not alone anymore. Somebody is coming for you. Because your prayers have come up to me. And I have answered you. People of God, this is me now talking to you. This is the chimera. Listen carefully. Tomorrow, we're going to go into the second path. We're going to be looking at the Annunciation. This is the pre-annunciation service tonight. John is coming to prepare the way for his brother, Jesus. 
God has started to prepare you tonight for next year. Don't wait until January 1 for you to go ahead with God. Start today. I have spoken to some of you that for some reason I suddenly knew that 2019 has already broken out on us since the end of November 2018. How that happened, I don't know. They do what they want. God is not subject to human calendars. God, that's where we fell. We, we want to put God in our pocket. And that is why I am succeeding in what God has asked me to do. Is that I'm flexible. I'm open to him. Many things I don't plan. They just happen. Why? They tell me to go and I go. The operations, the works of next year has already started. And all we are doing is just catching up. Play this prophetic word. This broadcast, play it many times and let it sink in. If not, at the end of 2019, God will remind you that everything you were supposed to know is in tonight's broadcast. I mean, on December 30th, 2018 and 31st, and January 1st, you will hear the deep things concerning next year. But somebody has been released on earth and in heaven to go ahead of you so that you do not suffer. Because your cry has come up to heaven that you don't have anybody. Many of you your fathers, your mothers, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, your country, everyone has turned their back on you. They blame you for things you did and things you did not do. Many of you, like Elizabeth said, the Lord has come to wipe away my reproach. 2019, is the year of wiping away your reproach. People Amen. have given you up. They've given you. They've written you off. That your name is Mission Impossible. That's what God told me. That's your secret name that people have given to you and the devil has given to you. That you are Mission Impossible. But God has spoken differently concerning you. Are you willing to accept what you have heard tonight? Your failure or your success will be based on your obedience to the prophecy of tonight. Many of you know that I do not just sit down and tell you, hey, we are going to have a prophetic, a prophetic uh, thing. Call me for prophecy and all of that. I don't do that. Unless God moves me to go this way, I don't go there lightly. Because it comes with judgment and punishment if you enter into that territory. There are pastors when the tax season comes, that's when they put up all the shows and conferences and conventions so that you will bring your tax money. When Christmas comes from September, October, November, December, that's when they put up a lot of programs so that you bring out the money that you should have used to save for next year so that you spent it all. We don't do that. Apart from God telling me to tell you to sow a generous seed in order to have a harvest next year. You don't hear me asking you to come for major convention or conferences every year. I don't do that. 
unless I'm led to do it. So what you are hearing tonight, I wasn't prepared for it. I have no script that I wrote these things. It was just as the day progressed today. I went to get a haircut, get my nails done, go and see my doctor. Because there was something going on with me. And my, and my doctor said that I should come and see him. I was having a fever. For some reason, I don't know. And my doctor said, come on, come in, come in, come in this morning. So I went. I didn't prepare for any of this. And while I was in the doctor's office, before Dr. Smith comes in, the, the, uh, the Mexican nurse has come in to take my blood pressure. And my blood pressure was so good. It's, uh, it's supposed to have risen very high because of the fever I'm having. Because I'm extra warm. But my blood pressure is better than it has ever been. And the doctor said, what are you doing? Whatever you are doing. Mary, are you listening? Whatever you are doing, keep doing it. Mary, can you hear me? Yes. The doctor said, whatever you are doing, keep doing it. And not only that, you've even lost extra 10 pounds. Wow. And I'm having a very high fever. My blood pressure is something over 80. And the doctor was, what are you doing that you are better than me? I said, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just doing what you asked me to do. He said, you are, get, you are reacting to the winter. You are, that's why you are having something like a sore on the left side of my throat. But it's not affecting me swallowing. So he said, okay, I'm going to put you on antibiotic. And that he doesn't want me to see him again until February. But I can travel now. I'm glad to travel and to, and to go back to the office and work. And while he was talking to me, immediately we finished and he said, go, go to the pharmacy. Go and see the pharmacy. In the same hospital, go and see the pharmacy. The pharmacist is from Egypt. He likes me a lot. And God began to talk to me about what I'm going to do. And I'm like, I'm supposed to be sick. <laughs> I'm supposed to be your baby. You're supposed to be babying me and pampering me. And you are sending me to go and do prophecy. And to go and do prophecy. I don't even know what kind of God you are. He said, I am Father. That's my name. I'm Father. I am the one sending you. It's not from your head. It's not from your mind. I know that you are not feeling too well, but you will be good. Don't, don't listen to the sickness. Go and do what I ask you to do. And while I was just coming out of the doctor's office, he said, call, call Molly. It's the girl that does my nail, the white girl that does my nail. Tell her to change the nail color and make something else. And I called. And the everywhere was booked, but they say, ah, two o'clock, you should come in two o'clock. Your girl will be there waiting for you to do it. I said, okay. Then it was still like one o'clock. He said, then I heard a voice say, go and have a haircut. And I went in. And when I went in, my barber was just relaxing. There was nobody there. He was just there relaxing and chilling and watching, and watching, a, what do you call it, Judge Judy. <laughs> and I went in and he gave me this nice haircut and I just walked from it across the street went in to see Molly and then while she was taking care of me God was telling me all this I didn't tell Vicky I didn't call Mary I didn't call Roslyn at least the three people that I'm supposed to call to tell them hey there is a prophecy about to happen today hey this is what is going to happen no No preparation, nothing. And that's how God does his business. What preparation did Moses have when an angel came in a flame of fire to meet him at Horeb? None. What preparation did El 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 Elisha have? He was in his farm. 
when Elijah came and hit him with his prophetic cloth. What preparation did Joseph have when he got a dream? Or when he was called to go before Pharaoh? None. What preparation did David have when Samuel came into town? None. All that God wants you to have for him to come for you is ask him that you want to experience him face to face. And that was the greatest prayer of Moses. Can I see your face? And I will be satisfied. I don't want to tell a story that others told me about you. I want to tell the world that I've seen you. And that's what true religion is about. Your tears will not carry any power unless it's coming from the fact that you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Holy Ghost, you've seen angels, you've seen God the Father. How will I know that God has already entered into next year? Some people will base it on the fact, oh, okay, the Jews entered next year in September, October. No, many of you will notice that I did not even celebrate the Jewish New Year this year. Go and check the videos. I didn't even pay attention to it. I wanted to join. He said, no, don't, do, don't go there. And just as I, I, I left this, I, I was leaving the salon. He said, go and pick up the things you need for Christmas celebration. And I went in and picked up the, 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 the beautiful candles. He says, go and start. Don't pay attention to how you feel and all of that. Go ahead and serve me. Pay attention. Pay attention. God must be experienced before he must be talked about. What we read tonight in the Gospel of Luke, there is nothing impossible for God to do. Stop limiting God based on what you think about yourself and what they told you about you and what they told you about God. One simple cry, Father, let me see your face. That's all. Jesus, let me see your face. Holy Spirit, let me behold you. Remember, I did not say, let me see your face when I talk about the Holy Ghost. Because the Father and the Son do not allow you for security reason. Because of how the Holy Ghost is all that Jesus and the Father has. So extra carefulness. I use security to play on words. God doesn't need security. But we should also know that God needs the cherubims. For the Holy Ghost, it is because of the strong longing so much of the Father and the Son has been poured upon the earth. The love of God the Father and the love of God the Son is in the person of the Holy Spirit. You are going to love something or somebody and their love is the Holy Ghost. 
That's why they protect his person. That's the only way that I can describe it in human terms. I don't know how to put it. Maybe some years to come, some days they will. They will let me know a little bit more if that is necessary. But you will feel him. The Holy Spirit will embrace you. You will feel his hand. You will feel him kiss you. Like last night, I was talking to Mary and to Vicky. We were walking on the website last night. And I turned around and I kissed the Holy Ghost. He loves it. I don't know whether you've ever done that. I hug him. I ask him to come and sit on my tie. I ask him that I want to sit on his laps. I want to go out with him. He is the most invisible of the Trinity because of the special thing, the special love. That's what, that is the greatest money, the greatest houses, if you want to put it in material resources. The greatest wealth of God is two kinds. Please write that down as a power key. God has two greatest things that is called wealth. And that is the Holy Ghost and human beings. And that's it. Ah, you got it now. God has two kinds of wealth that mean everything to him. That's God the Father and Jesus. And it is the Holy Ghost and us. That's all. And number, when I say us, human beings, please let's say three, please, so that we don't confuse people. The three greatest wealth of God are the Holy Ghost, the angels, and the saints, both those alive and those who are alive up there. Those are the three major wealth of God. Other things are secondary wealth. So God has two kinds of wealth. The first one, the Holy Ghost, the angels, and the saints. And the second one is the other material resources and things that he has. That's all. Do something with your life. Do not forget tonight. Don't go to bed. Sit and calculate what is the seed you want to put on the ground for next year harvest. I welcome you to next year, tonight. And tonight, very strange. Do you know, have you noticed that today is December, the day of completeness? <laughs> yeah! 2018. Do you know that? Today, today is December, the day, the day of completeness, 2018. What does that mean? Seven. December the 7th. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Yeah. Think about that. That's serious. Mm -hmm. And that was the day that God decided to give us this prophecy. Go around the world and see whether you find anybody who has key in with what heaven is saying. This is where I love how God ministers or how God do business or how God loves me. Amen. The seventh day of December 2018 is when this is coming to us. <sighs> the Almighty God bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you 
and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his arena, his peace, his fulfillment, his abundance. Since he has decided to share the gift of his Son and the Holy Ghost, his two greatest divine gift with us. Glory be to God the Father. Glory be to you. People of God, I formally welcome you to walk with God in 2019. Run with Him. Good night. I will see you tomorrow during the Annunciation service. Tomorrow, Victoria will be reading to us from Luke chapter 1 beginning at verse number 26. And he will tell you about the second part of the Annunciation. The coming of the Son of the Living God, His birth. How it was announced so that you can have access to the experience of mystery. There is nothing like Mission Impossible. It is Mission Impossible for unbelievers. For you, the road is wide open for your success and winning. Nobody will be able to overcome you throughout 2019. Amen. I that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.